Hello and welcome to the Verizon JPA screencast part 1. This is the first part in a series of screencasts examining Verizon JPA. In part 1 we will download and install Verizon JPA and set up Eclipse. So let's get started. You need to register with Verizon and obtain a login before you can download the Verizon JPA technical preview. On the download page you'll find versions for Linux and Windows. We'll take the Red Hat version for this screencast. Once you have downloaded the version you require, unpack the archive and run the installer. The installer will install the Verizon Object Database, Verizon JPA, including the Verizon JPA tutorials, documentation, etc. The install takes just a few minutes. Choose your language and follow the install wizard. Accept the license agreement. Make sure you choose a destination with enough free space for the installation. I'm going to use home here. Install everything. For the database system administrator, I'm going to use the user version and the user group users. Click on next, next again, and that completes the installation. The install wizard will now install all the components we need to run the Verizon JPA tutorials, etc. Let's take a quick look at what's been installed. Take a look at the examples and at the JPA tutorial sources. And be sure to check out the screencast examining the JPA tutorial. Verizon JPA comes with an Eclipse plugin. This plugin will enhance your entity classes so as you can persist them. Add a new archive site. Navigate to the plugin archive. This is installed by the Verizon JPA installer. Just follow the Eclipse plugin wizard to install the Verizon JPA plugin. When the install is complete, you will need to restart Eclipse for the plugin to take effect. You will then be able to add Verizon JPA Nature to your Java projects. This completes Verizon JPA screencast part 1. Be sure to check out the other screencasts in this series. For further information, visit verizon.com. Thank you for your attention.